love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it took. No sh- Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Brother, what up, man? What's good, man? Everything guy you doing today, man? Yeah, man, I got more lyrics. Oh, yeah, like, like, yeah, no problem. No problem. Let's set it off. Set it off. I got some too. <laughs> I just need to see. I just need to see if it's worth it because you lost with the two live crew the other day. Yeah. Yeah, it's two know, live crew. But go ahead. I guess yeah. everybody just sent me more and more. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, don't let that nigga kill it. <laughs> The audience is suckers. But, yeah, the niggas in Ohio is crazy. Yeah, it's all Ohio niggas. Yeah, that's wild as much as I do for Ohio, man. I mean, not figuratively, you know, figuratively, man. Look, let me tell you something about Ohio, man. I'm not, this sounds like a personal person from Ohio, so I'm not putting it on the whole state. I really, really genuinely consider that my second home outside of New York City. And Nobody really shouted y'all out like me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, for real. I, I shouted y'all out, but Midwest niggas ain't even know. See, a <laughs> lot of people don't know to get to Ohio, not to Columbus where I was at, but to get to Ohio, it's only five and a half hours. It's a six-hour drive from New York and to get to Youngstown. You could be in the state of Ohio from New York in the five, five and a half hours. That's quicker than getting to Virginia, uh, yeah. North Carolina, uh, everything. You know, people just consider going down south. Um, closer, but Ohio's actually closer to New York. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I didn't man. know that. Yeah, it's for five and, to, to get into the state. Yeah. And Cleveland's about six hours, six and a half hour drive, but go ahead, go ahead. No, we're going to go. I want to deal with this um, other, the other story. You, okay, okay, let's do it, man. Let's go, okay, so let's yeah. deal with the other story. It seems like Gilbert Arenas had some words for y'all. There's a clip, and I promise y'all I'm not reaching. Y'all have been tagging me in this wanted Cam and Mace's reaction. He didn't at y'all specifically, but he was talking about the word pause and saying if you have to bring that up all the time, it's kind of sketchy if that's what you're thinking about all the time. And this is just coincidentally after y'all did, you know, make some comments about Gil and the Saucy Santana comments. So after seeing the video, what do you guys have to say in response? (laughs) <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert. Let me put this disclaimer out there, right? <laughs> I, I you like when you start with the yeah, disclaimer. You know when I come with the disclaimer. Let me go first because I'm about to go but, last. Yeah, let me just say something real quick, real, real quick. I, I can say, because I, I have some things to say too, but when Mace goes disclaimer, let me just put this out here real quick. For transparency before we <laughs> before we say what we gonna say because I know when the disclaimer's coming, pause. I like to say it, where it's gonna go. But in all transparency, to be totally honest with you, and and not necessarily May Mace was in the room, but I did call Gilbert Arenas for a lot of information mm-hmm. prior to getting um this deal with underdog fantasy. Um called him for podcasts. Um God, not saying guidance, just learning the game. A lot of people don't like to share information yeah. uh, in this space. And Gil was pretty much an open book. Um, he told me like what kind of money could be expected, or like you know clicks, um, so how to get money from subs. It, Gil gave me a lot of information. I was calling him like twice a week. Yeah, like, yo, Gil. So he um, really helped me, and you know, Mace uh, ex- helped me execute the deal. But I don't want to. Saying act like Gil didn't have a part in us yeah. making the decision. With that being said, let's do it. <laughs> That's Gil, well, so. you know, if he, <laughs> yeah. if he done all that for you, I'm going to take a different yeah. approach. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I, just, okay. I just wanted to get yeah, that out okay. the way. <laughs> it was good you said yeah, that, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. Because I was going to lead with, <laughs> Yeah, I'm nothing like what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> If you heard a Kaiser sauce, don't believe nothing of what it looks like. 
I'm really not the one, but you know, since Cam <laughs> said that, no, because I'm going to say some things. But, yeah, but well, I'm going to let you do that because I don't want to <laughs> injure the friendship. No, listen. I, I thank you, Gilbert, for all of the things you've done. Every time you got on the phone with Keller, every time you got on the phone with me, I appreciate that. That I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm, you know. I'm the type of guy I get you back 20 years later, you know. So yeah, you're vindictive. Yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> this is not the guy to do it <laughs> unless you really yeah. are thinking about, you know, watching over your neck for the next 20 years. <laughs> I'll show up on your Christmas, you know. <laughs> but Cam said you're good. So you're good with me, Gil. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no harm, no foul. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna let you handle it, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, listen, man, um, and I, I really don't, you know, and this is kind of a strange space for me because I never met Gil in person, but I really like his uh, podcast and what he's doing. And like I said, I don't take any sharing of knowledge for granted, especially yeah. when it leads to what it led to. So I'm not going to do pause, but I usually... Yeah, thank, <laughs> I, well, thank you, yeah, Gil. Thank yeah, you, yeah, Gilbert. Yeah, what I really would do, but... Just give you some back history real quick, Gil. Uh, the pause game, or what we don't <laughs> say on the show. It started in Harlem, or we found out about it in Harlem. We didn't invent the game. Yeah. We grew up with it since we was about 13 years old. You see Dame Dash's interviews, he can't even stop saying it. <laughs> like, yeah. like it's embedded in some people's heads. So us growing up in Harlem and then going to school on the east side of Harlem where it kind of started at. Um, yeah, it's kind of... Um, embedded, you know, not in every scenario, but for the show. And then what happened is once we started doing the show, uh, when we don't say pause, niggas is coming at us. They tagging Mace. How you yeah. let him, how you let Cam slide? How you slide, let Cam go on? Yeah, yeah, on that. When I, yeah, when I say, so, how you let <laughs> Mace get away with this? So it's kind of been incorporated with the show. Um, so that's the pause portion of the show. Like, it's nothing suspect about us. It's nothing like that. It's just us growing up in Harlem. And it was part of the culture. As you can see, it's been part of the culture for years. Um, you know, Little Wayne says it. You know, they say something different that we don't say anymore yeah. on the show. Kanye says it. It's, it's part of we we've made it part of the culture. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to give a backstory on that. It isn't like you got to question us to think that anything else like that. And I really, and, and all jokes I get, I consider your friend. So when I'm doing this, even like when you said what you said, to me, I'm taking that as a as my second cousin at the family reunion, retaliating what, what I said. So that's how I take it. But I don't think you can really compare us saying pause to you looking at a nigga twerking and talking about a good show is a good show and then pull your money out and be like, woo, and then say, it looked better than Meg the Stallion to me. If you compare pause to that. You said better than Megan? Yes, yes. He said he doesn't know who he'd be throwing his dollars to, Meg or Saucy. Oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Gloves off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying goodness. to handle this pause. I'm trying to handle it delicately because yeah. I fuck with Gil. I fuck with that nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But if we doing a comparison of us saying pause to saying a good show is a good show, I don't know who I would throw my money at, making the stallion a saucy, and then pull some money out. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't think that was a good battle, Gil. If you want to come back with something else, and then we do it again <laughs> later, because there's no way in the world, just me personally, no disrespect, because I, I fuck with Source 2, not on that level. <laughs> <laughs> not on that level. I, res I respect that niggas ain't hiding it. I, it to me, and, and not to dive into this, uh, topic, but I, I respect people who's openly, uh, if it's gay, whatever they are, whatever they are. Yeah. I, I respect that more than being a secret. So when I say I respect it, it's no hiding. They're letting you know what you are, what they are. They're gay and they have a problem with that. And I respect that more than anything. I don't have a problem with gay people, LGBTQ, whatever. I don't like when people disguise it. I have a problem yeah. with that. I, I really do, to be totally honest with you. If you, this 2024, be who you need to be, but I, I just don't like 
people hiding who they are. So I have mad respect for Saucy, but if you can, I, I don't want to see him twerk. <laughs> and he want to get a dollar from me <laughs> in, in no club or no room or anything. Actually, I was pretty perturbed about the situation, to be totally honest with you. But going to be light about it, Paul. So I'm going to be cool because, like I said, I fuck with Gil. I fuck with Gil. But when I seen him, he's like, yeah. you know, when he's, I don't know if you've seen the video, Murder. He was like, you making me question you when you say pause. Yeah. So just let me ask you, Stat, you're a female. Would you question... And and not saying you don't you don't know it. So if you're just looking at two guys on the screen, and somebody be like pause, 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 whatever, and then you'd be like, mm, God damn, good show's a good show, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who would get my money, Meg the Stallion, or yeah. or um or Saucy. What, what, what would you think? Just I don't know. Thing. I thought you were going to be honest about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I thought you were going to take the corporate answer because I was going to say, like, shout out to Gil for giving y'all the knowledge that he gave y'all. But like, I don't know, Gil, what you said, that's not nobody's fault that you said that you right. like watching Saucy Santana that's twerk. Yeah. So that's on you. Yeah, don't play. Yeah, don't play. Yeah. 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 Get that nigga yeah. camera. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, yeah. like, yeah. 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 Stay Stay get a bonus. Stay in the bonus. I'm just saying, you can't be mad at nobody else but yourself because you said that you like to watch Saucy twerk. That clip went viral you probably didn't expect it to go viral it's everywhere and now saucy santana coming for you and you can't be mad at nobody but yourself if that's not what you wanted now if that is what you wanted <laughs> shout out to you for shooting your shot because yes. that's what it looked like <laughs> that's what it looks like that's it <laughs> okay Steph. Steph, you get a raise this week Steph. Okay. you getting a raise I, that this was week that was her personal Steph. opinion I, like, <laughs> that was that's my, just that like that was, I don't know what you want that, me to say yeah and then, and then alright let's talk about yeah, it yeah let's man. talk now and then just and then just not to add on kind of you know whatever we talk about it people think that we be on a witch hunt for certain niggas if it's in the news and it's all over the blogs. Yeah, we're never right. on a witch hunt. Yeah, we're not on a witch hunt for niggas, never. yo. This right. this comes across our desk and we have topics to talk about and so on and so forth. We not digging in nobody's crates, yeah. files, closets, etc. This comes across. So yeah. to me, the way I take it is murder is that is that when you the biggest pause or you the main niggas. Yeah, this is what happens because it was a million blogs who talked about it. Right. It was a hundred, but they zoomed in on the, us on, talking on about us it. Us talking right. about yeah. it. You get what I'm saying? It's a bunch of people you could have won at because uh, it was on every single blog uh, possible. So coming to us, I just take it as we the biggest and we the best. Poor. So at the end of the day, it's flattering. But Stat said what she said. <laughs> yeah, but we're not on a witch hunt. Be careful, and I'm not just talking about Gil, you know, even with the uh, dig situation. You got no idea how many people called me from Wallow to, uh, yeah. to, you know, I don't want to name, I know Wallow don't care, that's my nigga, but about the um, Trayvon Diggs situation, they like, yeah. Cam, fuck that. You ain't yeah. do nothing wrong. He said, you, he said, you and murder and stat, y'all niggas got up there and told niggas what they need to hear. Not necessarily stat on that topic, but just saying, basically, they don't want to hear the truth. And then yeah. when niggas hear the truth, they got to add to it. I got a plethora of like, I, and I'm not going to exaggerate, maybe about 50 calls yeah. about, nah, fuck that, don't let up. Because yeah. them niggas need to hear it. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of people who call and support because we're giving a raw, honest opinion. But even like that situation, the reason I'm bringing it up, we wasn't on a witch hunt. Yeah. We, why, why didn't, what you think? We got a nigga following you, nigga? Right. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck you be doing in your personal time. It comes across the desk. And if niggas don't deny it, then it's speculation after that. You know what I'm saying? So, I just want to add real quick too, like this is where you get a genuine unbiased opinion because I also get tagged in a lot of stuff because people are like, gotta, yeah. hear, gotta hear their opinion on this. I want to know what they have to say about this. And you see, you know, a lot of people will avoid situations and conversations if they know that person specifically. Our job is to talk about it regardless if we know that person, if we don't. Obviously, up here, we know a lot of different people. And yeah. those people we might be real tight with, but the news is the news. You gotta mm -hmm. you gotta have your opinions on it regardless. So mm -hmm. right. it's not like we're looking and like trying to like start nothing. Like that's just what it is. 
It's so. the news. Yeah, yeah. And, when, and when I when I first got on the when I first did the first episode with Cam, I just let him know that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell the truth about everything. If I talk about it, I gotta tell the truth. I have the right to say I don't want to touch this subject, but if I talk about it, that's what they got me on here to tell the truth. So since we're telling the truth, right? This is the thing that that I heard in all the conversation. I'm more appalled that. People would think to attack us and it shows that they have so much respect for other people. So it seemed like people have no no concern to deal with the real issue, but have a lot of energy towards man. I, like I didn't grow up in a day and I and I and I know that there's people out there like people say they have nothing against gay people. I'm saying we're in a society where people honor gay people over straight men and that's crazy and i'm gonna say that because that's that's for me to say you know people count on me to tell the truth i'm not gonna go any further than that but i'm gonna say that because i think it's time for men to you know really be men and not be biased about what they believe everybody else can say what they believe so you gotta be able to say what you believe well said any response to Gil? I just said it. <laughs> I just said it because all the energy was towards yeah, to, him, to, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, bro, is an is another elephant in the room. Yeah, that so, you're not you know, addressing. You know, to be honest, stat to be honest, and and I'm glad you asked and makes that just now because. That was like a wild, clever way <laughs> to actually say what you want to say and put it eloquently. Yeah. So, because it kind of went over my head too until Stat asked the question. And and what Mace is saying, and it's like he says, no disrespect to anybody yeah. gay or anything. But what Mace just said, and it went over my head until Stat asked that question. He said, do you have a response to Gil? What Mace said is, you want to come and camp but you won't say nothing to Saucy. That was just exactly what he said. Exactly. In, in a way that may go over a lot of people said, and, and yeah. I may not have paid it any mind if Stat didn't have the follow up question and Mace just said. Yeah, and I, I was trying I to find a respectful way to say it, but I'm, I'm noticing that everywhere we go, every in everything that people do, that it's almost like human beings are equal, but it seemed like people got more respect. They watch what they say over here, but you're not gonna watch what you say you're right. with, with a stray guy, that's crazy. That's a great point. That's a great point. I'm from a different generation, you know? Right, and, and to be clear, just, just before y'all start the bullshit, yeah. Yeah. to be clear, what Mace is saying that it isn't about, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't yeah. wanna say something, just wanna be clear and dumb it down for the people. Yeah, there's no I, disrespect to anybody, but if you're gonna have respect, for for one one style of men, then you gotta have respect for a regular man. Yeah, right. And, and we're in a society society right now. And to add on what you was just saying, it's like because they're gay and somebody straight, you gonna know, disrespect the straight guy and, and give the gay guy a pass. And at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We're all men. Yeah, we're all men. At the end yeah, of the respect day. all men. That's what I'm saying. Right, respect right. all men. If you're gonna respect gay men, respect straight men. That's the clip. Okay. Very well said. There we go. Okay, so let's get into the Mavs organization. They have a personal chef prepare meals for Kyrie during Ramadan. So, how do you guys feel about the Mavs treatment of players? And then, do you guys think Kyrie was lacking this treatment at other organizations? Hmm. Stat, you always asking a question where it could be major smoke. I think you're growing in the smoke, <laughs> Stat. <laughs> Might be pur purposeful. Yeah. Might be purposeful. Cam, you go first. I, I got to I gotta think about this well, for a moment. I, I know what the topic is, but where's the exact question so I can answer it correctly? Yeah, so how do you feel about the Mavs organization's treatment of players, and then do you guys think Kyrie was lacking this treatment from other organizations? No, um, I don't, to answer the question, I don't think he was lacking this treatment for other organizations. But when you have an owner like Mark Cuban, he gets it. You understand? Every owner is not Mark Cuban. Every owner is not running on the court when Kyrie hits a game winner 
and jumping in the crowd with the rest of the team. Yeah. Mark Cuban ran on the court, jumped on the crowd. You're not going to have an owner like that. And, you know, um, even talking to our brother, Sham God, uh, the praises for Mark Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks organization as a yeah. whole has been, been stellar. Yes, yeah, stellar, top tier, so on and so forth. I remember a few years ago, uh, it was something going on with the Dallas Mavericks to where they weren't treating employees right. Um, I don't know if it was a male chauvinist thing or people were underpaid and so on and so forth. And it was a big situation where the employees had a problem with the organization. Mark Cuban wasn't aware of it because Mark Cuban's doing a million different things. As much as you see him with the Mavericks, you see him on Shark Tank, and that's just television. You can imagine all the behind-the-scenes businesses that he's done. He, he was a visionary on HD television, um, yeah. investing into that before people was even on it. Very smart man. So when he found out that employees wasn't being treated right, he started canning niggas, firing niggas. And then he put a woman in charge. After that, I forget her exact position uh, with the organization, but he he said, what? I didn't even know this was going on. Get these niggas the fuck out of here. You're qualified, you're a woman, and so I'm gonna give you an opportunity and help me clean this shit up because I don't need that stain on my organization. So I think he treats his players very well because he, he gets it, you know? Kyrie has a strong belief in Ramadan as long as what a lot of brothers and sisters that I know out there right now that's fasting during the day. Mm -hmm. um, they're in the middle of their 30-day. Um, you know, if you don't know what Ramadan is, you could Google it and do some more research. I'm not here to break that down, but it's a lot of things you can't do until nighttime mm -hmm. or a certain time of the day, and Kyrie's um, doing what he has to do. But Mark Cuban gets it. So when I say that, I don't think that it's about um, other organizations not treating their players as well. You just don't have other organizations with an owner like Mark Cuban. Mm -hmm. uh, you got, um, what's our nigga name who own the Knicks right now? I don't know why I can't, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's um, not Dolan. Yeah, James Dolan. Oh, Dolan. Yeah, it is still Dolan. James Dolan kicked Charles Oakley out the, the garden. <laughs> <laughs> James, like, I, don't think, I don't know that nigga no more. James Dolan told Spike Lee, yo, stop taking the employee elevator. You're not an employee. Yeah, you're not an employee. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? To where, let's say if Mark Cuban was the owner of the New York Knicks, Charles Barkley's royalty forever. Yeah. You know, Spike Lee, nigga, you've been here for years. You get this. Yeah, seat. you pay for these tickets yeah, all these years. Yeah, exactly. To where James Dolan is he's Wall Street, he's corporate. I don't give a fuck. This is my business, et cetera. But I think Mark Cuban is one of them guys that kind of get it. So and you're just not going to have a lot of Mark Cuban. So I think yeah. it's more about Dallas understanding as opposed to other teams not treating their players right. Yeah, and every time, every time I go out to Dallas, they, the, the organization treats, treats me well. They ask about you. They ask you, well, tell Cam to come to a game. So, and they sit us front row every time right, on, the, on the floor every time. It right. doesn't matter who's there. Right. And I, I think that is almost like they sit aside these seats for somebody important. Mm -hmm. So in places that you value, you wanna go more. And to even speak more about Mark Cuban, he's flying in a chef right. to cook for Kyrie, mm -hmm. to make sure that as soon as the sun goes down, he has the vegan meal that he, he would like. Absolutely. Um, that speaks to that franchise. Give yeah. you no excuse to not be a great baller. Right, and and think, and think about it. Um, Kyrie, Kyrie is not even making excuses. And I'm not saying because he's with Dallas or he's mm -hmm. around our brother Sham or anything else. Kyrie's a, a great mind. Sometimes people don't always get his vision. Um, it's like even to me, and I'm not comparing him to this person, just saying in general, a lot of people thought Tupac was crazy till he died. Yeah. And it's like, yo, bro, if you listen to what that man says today, for him to be 25 years old and saying a lot of the things that he said before he died, that was just a mind beyond his time. And I think that Kyrie, I'm like, so I'm not comparing the two because <laughs> at all. But I'm it's just It's hard to think you're not, though. No, I'm just, no, what I'm saying is <laughs> when people have their own opinion or or um, point of view, and it doesn't agree with the majority, yeah. they try to make you seem crazy. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this thing's crazy. Like, he doesn't think like me. I don't believe in dinosaurs. Yeah. Cam is crazy. How the fuck he don't believe in dinosaurs? UFOs. Right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Cam is wow. How you, well, and then really get mad at me about it like they seen a dinosaur. So <laughs> then Sin City is not crazy. He believes we get the, the Wi-Fi from um. From yeah, aliens. Yeah, no, and he believes he's he's one of the people that's mad I don't believe in dinosaurs and he's mad at the aliens and so on and so forth. And I'm saying, look, I'm not mad at you for believing in them. Why yeah. are you so mad at me? So I when I comparing it to, I'm just saying, when you don't agree with the majority, people tend to make you look crazy. And I think that's what happened in New York to where you don't hear anything this season about Kyrie off the court. I haven't heard one thing off the court about Kyrie yet. And then maybe I'm missing something. But um, yeah, I think he deserves that because you out there balling, you hit in left hand. And you know what pisses me off and not in a bad way, everybody's talking about this left hand floater that he hit. And explain it, yo. When y'all sit there and talk about this left hand floater, don't act like it was in the paint. Don't act like it was under the yeah. basket. This was almost at the key. Yeah, this uh, was this was one dribble in the key inside over, the key over a two-time league MVP to seven-one. So with the left, with the left. So I don't want that flow to be downplayed. That shit was amazing. So shout out to Mark Cuban, the Dallas Mavericks organization, and uh, Kyrie Irving, and, and our brother Shamgar too. And I want to share something. Another thing that I learned today, even listening to um, Cam, you did an excellent job on the Gilbert Arenas thing. Oh, you did you. an excellent job with thank this you. part. And this this goes to Cam was media trained. I was media trained. So we know how to talk in front of the mic. We know what to say and what not to say. Mm -hmm. And some of you athletes and entertainers need to take a page out of that book. Certain things you don't have to talk about. If somebody bring up somebody's name, because I see this happen a lot on the Internet, we're not going to just be warring with people. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting that disclaim out there. We are very media trained. We know what we want to talk about and we know what we don't. Absolutely. And and to Mace's point, 100% correct. And Because people that try to just bring up our name think we're going to talk about them and that'll be the purpose of doing right, it. Right. Absolutely not. We Everybody doesn't get our attention. That's 100%. You know how much shit we do ignore? So, um, and and just for, and this ain't a disclaimer, this is the fine print. <laughs> Don't think you're going to get a Gilbert Arenas pass playing games, Neva. <laughs> <laughs> That's first and foremost. Don't think that everybody's going to get the Gilbert Arenas Package. the media. <laughs> Pause. Wow. That was great. Wow. wow. We was doing perfectly fine. Don't think you're getting the Gilbert Arenas package. <laughs> <laughs> we all, I ain't gonna do it for us, but yeah, but yeah, you're right, Murder. Look, it, and that that's not gonna happen for everybody. But Gil, you know, like I said, I said it first, so it took, you know, it took everything in me pause to say, "Wusa." <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me, let me chill, because Gil, Gil was picking the phone up and helping us out. But yeah, that will not, that will not go for everybody. It will not. It will. It will certainly not. It will man. end well, but bad. It will end bad. Well, but like May said, I, I and I tell people all the time, uh, we're probably two of the smartest people that you ever ever meet. So when we need to be ignorant, it's very calculated, very deliberate and and it, it, it can hurt Paul's bad because <laughs> <laughs> it really could. <laughs> so that's really up to y'all. Okay. Then also on the topic of Kyrie, Draymond Green said Kyrie Irving is the score that the world thinks of KD. Do mm. you guys agree? That's a, that's a strong point. Now, see, this is what I mean about media training. Draymond knows what he's saying here. He knows that he's bigging up Kyrie, but he's also throwing a shot at KD for whatever they got going on. So that is pause. It's a two for one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's definitely what he's doing here. He's bigging up his guy, but he's also saying, you know what? What y'all actually think KD is, is what Kyrie is. So every time, you know how you think KD can get a basket whenever you want. Um, he's a bucket waiting to happen. One of the best scorers to ever play the game. 
he's actually shifting all of those accolades on to Kyrie. And I think I think is a disservice is a disservice to KD because um, when you watch the game, KD is he's he's different. He would be the first alien if there was an alien. Seven seven one with the wingspan and do do what he does. I know KD. Sometimes we I'm on your case, but I I like to just call it straight the way it is. He can get a basket from anywhere, score on three levels, um, just everything you would want in a basketball player. Pause. Um, KD is right, and to say Kyrie is, you could have said that without throwing KD under the basket. Uh, people I know that's, that's, that's close to KD uh, with this Draymond situation, they're, everybody in KD's camp is confused. They're like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? And and I don't want to, I don't have permission to talk about a lot of stuff, so I'm not going to get- Confused about what? Get into detail about it. Just, you know, KD think they cool, then one minute Draymond is bashing them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, Yo, I thought we cool, then nigga not cool. Then he'll say, we'll see each other be cool, then you'll say some other shit. And I think it stemmed from what happened was that a lot of times even athletes, I guess, take sound bites if they don't mm-hmm. do the due diligence of what the actual context of the conversation was. When, when uh, Draymond took some time away, not took time away, when he got suspended and Adam Silver told him that he had to sit out indefinitely and Draymond was saying that he possibly was going to get some help that he needed, et cetera, or whatever. Or Adam Silver said he was going to get some help. Whoever said he's going to get some help. They asked KD, KD this after a game and they asked KD like, yo, you're going to get, Draymond said he's going to go get help. And KD response was, yeah, I hope he, I hope he does get the help that he needs if he needs to get help. And I think Draymond took that as, oh, you telling me I need to get help, nigga? Fuck is you talking about I need to get help? (laughs) When he's just reading a piece of paper or somebody's asking him a question like, yo, Draymond said he's going to get some help for whatever. Or Adam Silver said it. I don't want Draymond getting mad at me. One of the whoever said it. But that's how it is when you and a person got a problem. When you and a person got an underlining problem, anything they do is going to go pause the wrong way. Right. Because you already got something in your mind about that person. That means that Draymond has something in his brain about KD. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that take as well. But I just saying that from KD, it's kind of like one-sided on Draymond because it's like, bro, sometimes we cool, sometimes we not. Is this real? Is this not real? What's going on? So yeah. it's more like, what, what are we doing? What's the problem? Okay, we got words, we got beef, but at the same time, they fuck with each other. But then at the same time, Draymond says slick shit. And it's like, to KD's point, it's like, bro, what, what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? So. To me, my personal opinion, and I'm not putting it on a level with Michael Jordan at all, but I, you know, Michael Jordan used to create these fake beefs to have a chip on his shoulder so he could play better. And I think that's what Draymond does with not just KD, with a bunch of people. Yeah, God right. bless you. Thank you very much. Um, I think that's what he does with, with a bunch of people to where it's like, yeah, I'm gonna have a problem with him tonight, or this, that, and the third. Because if you think about it, <laughs> Draymond, can name every single, if you go to Dream On today, yeah. he can name all 39 players that was drafted before him off the, off the top of his head. You pull up on Draymond right now, he'll name one through 39 <laughs> of the people who was drafted before him off the top of his head. Pause. To remember that many people, who, and, and let's say for instance, maybe 20 of them aren't relevant anymore, maybe 17 aren't even playing in the NBA, but for you to know every person drafted before your top, you had, you're walking around with a big chip on your shoulder, and maybe that's what motivates him to play. That's 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 really interesting because you're right. That is what it takes to be great. Because I remember, I remember a lot of people that that went before me. Pause. 
in, in music, and I thought that way. Right. When y'all did Eight Is Enough, I had your name on the list too. <laughs> it wasn't even my song. I know. I'm just, I'm just giving context yeah. to, to Draymond. He's like, oh, all these niggas is better than me. Word. <laughs> so, Draymond, I'm going to bail you out. <laughs> it wasn't even my You're like, song. yeah, all yeah. these niggas. Is... <laughs> and I remember one time we went to the Nassau Coliseum and they ain't let us in. I remembered all them niggas Mike Geronimo. Keith Murray, Biggie, all the niggas that was there. Mm -hmm. Even the DJs. Wow. Four five. I sell yeah. Yeah, four five. I I'm never four, gonna five. be I bet you I'll never be outside the arena again. <laughs> wow. Oh, so you've been walking around with a drink watch. <laughs> I, I, I had to catch myself. Straight on, I understand. Niggas left you out. Word. You been walking around. Back. Back. Heard Back. you. Well, heard, say less. Yeah. <laughs> All that. I never knew. I knew. I knew it was a personal thing with Big L. I didn't know it was. All now you wasn't in the personal list, but yeah. it was definitely like I remember the names. I right. remember all these names, right? And it kind of it, it did help because when you go in to record, you're thinking, okay, this many people is better. We gonna see. We gonna see. And it makes you present your best art. So hopefully that's what's gonna happen to Draymond because to make all this smoke, you gotta perform after this. Yeah, look, Draymond been in the league, I believe, mm -hmm. I believe, since 2011, 2012. For him today to remember every single <laughs> name in 2024 <laughs> is wild, bro. So this is an everyday, this is put this put this chip in the book bag <laughs> and take it with you to work every single day. Okay, well, the Draymond discussion doesn't end here. We're going to go to break, and when we return, we will discuss a recent altercation with Draymond. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Knicks will play Denver. Underdog fantasy has Jokic at 46 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do them higher or lower, Mace. How many points again? 46 and a half points, rebounds, assists. Lower. I think he's going to have a great game, but not that much. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go higher. <laughs> okay. Just, also, real quick, guys, guys, let's finish this up before I say. Jamal Murray's at seven assists. Do you have him higher or lower? Lower. Lower. And Jalen Brunson is at seven first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower? Mace? Higher. I higher. See. Okay, download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. I know you had some thoughts. Yeah, yo, Mark, niggas is still mad about. Us not giving, I thought we did a good job of giving the Knicks props. The niggas is still mad. They say <laughs> it would have been cool, but you ended with mediocre. You know, everybody on the team is in just sin. Yo, all y'all niggas calling me, be four or five niggas. Why would you have to throw mediocre in it? Fourth is mediocre. <laughs> Mitchell Robinson is out. We ain't got our son of Julius Randle. It is not an injury free league. This is the way it goes. Secondly, we put out there that we've been heartbroken too many years. We want the Knicks to win, and they're playing outstanding. Jalen Brunson is looking like a potential superstar one of these days. He's already an all-star. He's on the way. I, I don't really know what y'all want me and Mace to say um, more about the Knicks. I thought we gave y'all a lot of props, and uh, I even though with, with the record um, – Cleveland's ahead of y'all. I actually think that y'all are a better team than Cleveland. And you'll have some pieces that are injured, and hopefully they'll make it back for the playoffs and we see what happens in the playoffs. But we not dissing y'all. We calling it like we see it. I don't I don't really know what else to do. I have no clue what else yeah, to do. Yeah, and we and we addressed our trauma. Yeah, yeah. With going for the Knicks. It's right. not that we didn't want them to win. 
we we've been let down too many times. My last New York Nick team was Mark Jackson and Rod Strickland. Mm-hmm. That was my last right. New York team. Right. And listen, God, God bless the dead. My mom passed last year. I used and, and I would talk to her about basketball, and I and I'm talking about like let's say two years ago. I'd be like, "Yo, who's your favorite?" And, I, and I'm talking about like during this season. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's the 2021 season, 22 season. I'll be like, "Who you got? Who your favorite team?" She said, "The 1973 Knicks." I said, "Mom, I'm talking about this <laughs> season." <laughs> she said, "No, nah, I don't. I don't go past that. I don't. I'm, I'm, that's the last team. That's my team. I, I'm not going past 73." <laughs> so I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom, cause you know why? My mom loved, She went to school. She went to Brandeis, and she went to that game six or whatever game it is in tenth grade. When Willis Reed came out the back limping and all that other shit, she was there in tough grade. So to put it in perspective, the last time the Knicks won a championship, and I'm not disrespecting, I'm just telling you the trauma is us growing up. My mother was in tough grade. This wow. is what I'm trying to explain to people. Wow. You get what I'm saying, Murda? I don't know what else they want us to do. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. <laughs> In the last championship they went to, they let the nigga Avery Johnson get get a championship. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what else. I didn't to understand do. that. Yeah, and listen, and that was against Steph. Steph said over his dead body, Ooh. will 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 um Avery get a chip over him? Steph who? Steph Marbury. Okay, yeah. Well, listen, you're talking about the Spurs, right? Yeah. And what I'll say is this: as much as people. People love Patrick Ewing, and he's a New York legend, so on and so forth. Pat let two centers beat him in championships. You know what I'm saying? Was Pat on the 2000 team? Yeah. Right. So you got Akeem Olajuwon in in 94, Mm. and then you got David Robinson in 2000. So you it wasn't like the best players on either team wasn't centers. I don't know if 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 um Ewan was on the team, okay, that's Steph. what I want to know. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, he might not have been, but but either way, when you had your chance, you had your chance. Keem <laughs> Keem just Keem just went crazy on niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? Keem was a different animal, man. Because not only you got to think about it, not only and and I know he was young as well, but uh, Akeem sent Pat Patrick Ewan home packing, and he sent Shaquille O'Neal home packing too in the championship. A lot of people don't know that nigga was that deal, man. So we're rooting for you guys, man. That's all I got. Yeah, for real. Okay, so earlier in the Grizzlies versus Warriors game, Draymond got into an altercation with Desmond Bain, leading to Memphis's coach Taylor Jenkins getting knocked to the ground. What do you guys think about all of the recent behavior that's been happening? Well, before we get to the recent behavior, Draymond, if you're looking to get your get your weight up, that 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 one will count. You know what I'm saying? I know you choked out a lot of other people, but you better not try that with bang. I'm just I'm just giving you a disclaimer. I don't want to see nothing go wrong, you know. Why you can't try that with bang? Bang didn't look like he was going for any of that. Pause. You little Not diesel at all. nigga, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw Ja walk up. You yeah. saw the whole team. This Memphis is the wrong place to try the tough guy stance. It's, it's just not a good time, especially this time of the year. You got a Dolph case going on, just a lot. It's just it's all bad to try to be tough in Memphis. I wouldn't do it. Shannon Sharp ain't kept. <laughs> he, he did that in L.A. though, That's right? true. That <laughs> yeah. was in L.A. Yeah, he better yeah. not, you know. Money bag yo and them niggas from yeah. the sideline. <laughs> Could you yeah. just see somebody fighting with Braves? You think it's one of your own. Right. Everybody just clear the bench, you know? Yeah, listen, niggas got niggas brothers jumping over the scores table in women's college yeah. basketball. <laughs> yeah, so, it's crazy know. out here. So yeah. I don't want him to, you know, let his legacy be remembered as a brawler when he's such an amazing basketball player. And that's something to keep in mind, you know. Mm-hmm. His legacy is too strong with with what he's been able to do with the talent that he has and, and the hardship that he come in the NBA under. He did a lot. I don't really have too much to say. This was been going on all season with Draymond. Yeah. I was, and to be honest with you, 
Draymond has always been a roughhouse type player. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Kim is window pimping. Go over there. Go in and talk to the and talk to the girl that I'm with. Just with us. Yeah. Yo, Nat, put them under the wing. Not Nick approved. Yo, 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 Nat, put these joints under your wing. <laughs> yeah, Nick approves, but um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Under the net wing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let it's up to net. Let me put net on the wing. Um, real quick. Um, what I'll say is this: is that Draymond has always been a roughhouse player, mm-hmm. and it, it isn't like it's something new. But it, what happens is after he got into that altercation with Jordan Poole, it's kind of been magnified. And now it seems even worse than it, mm-hmm. it probably is. Not saying that he had smacked the shit out of homeboy or, you know, what other other fouls stepping on niggas, jumping on niggas. But after Jordan Poole, everything just seems magnified. But uh, as far as the altercation that happened at night, it wasn't nearly one of the worst situations he had in let alone, his career, let alone this year. So I don't make a big deal out of it. I got to ask those based off of what you started to say, you guys don't think that being a brawler is already part of his legacy? Yeah, but it, you don't want to end fighting and losing. A lot of things people let you get away with when you're winning that you do not get away with while you're losing. That's what I'm saying. And it could expedite his exiting of the NBA. Yeah, great point. Okay, so the creators of Netflix's quarterback are now creating a receiver documentary with wide receivers instead of quarterbacks. It'll feature some players such as Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, George Kittle, Debo Samuel. Do you guys think that this will be a good watch or no? I think it will be a great watch for Netflix, right? And I also think they should add they should add digs to this. This will be Really interesting, even though he's not a receiver, right? But he, it, it would be great to add him on there. Let's Netflix, let's add Diggs so they know we're not just pushing players down. We're just telling the truth. That would be real interesting yeah. to see what his life is like. Yeah, Mace is absolutely right. And to your point, uh, people do want to see behind the scenes. People yeah. do want to see what people go through. Uh because we tend to look at athletes as robots and not us, but I'm just saying in general, people who've never been in the limelight or, or public figures, um, we say, oh, this, this, oh, you fucked the game up. You let the city down, this, that, and the third. And I know that comes with it. But at the same time, they're still human beings. I, like I said, I was on a flight with Mike Tyson um, coming back to Vegas a couple of weeks ago. And I know that, Sometimes I, to me, and I'm not going to thank God that I'm in a position I'm in. I would never take it for granted to be who I am and what I've accomplished. And I would never take it for granted. I wouldn't want to be anybody else. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it may get overbearing and be like, all right, I'm going to take this picture. I'm going to kiss this baby. I'm going to do it. All right, cool. But it's part of the job. The way I look at it is that I don't have to get up and sit in traffic to go listen to some nigga that I'm smarter than that they call my boss. Or yeah. or have to or have to uh, work at a job for eight hours that I don't want to be at. So when it comes to signing autographs, kissing babies, taking pictures, I do all that because I just feel that I'm very privileged. But the reason I brought Mike Tyson up is because I'm like, damn, yo, I better stop even thinking that I'm complaining a little bit because that harassment that Mike Tyson gets is wow. Mike Tyson, we left the airport. Mike, yo, Mike, that's you, Mike. Yo, Mike. They told Mike, make a muscle. Mike's in there like, <laughs> you know, Mike gets, <laughs> yo, Mike, yo, Mike, yo, Mike, yo, Mike. We sitting in, in first class. Everybody walked by, oh, shit, Mike Tyson. Come back down. Mike, I'm like, God damn. Mike gets harassed. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and he was very nice, took every picture, did every, and I'm like, damn, this is, I, I I better not complain about shit because the Mike Tyson in public shit is wild, man. So um, to answer the question, I think this is great to get more behind the scenes 
uh, things that athletes go through in, um, in, in outside of sports. So I think it's yeah. great. I don't think they should limit it to just these two positions, pause. They should let they should just pick the most entertaining people. I think that's a good point too. But I also see them just trying to like make it a theme just for like storytelling mm-hmm. purposes, but I I definitely agree with that. So, an a player that a lot of people were suggesting that should be on the documentary is Chiefs wide receiver Kadarius Tony. Do you guys think that that would be a good watch or do you guys think that I, that would actually hurt him more in the long run because of like the drops that he had earlier in the season when we're not seeing the drops and i remember he had a little attitude with ab because ab calls him butterfingers and everything else i was like i didn't really know him a lot until i noted the drops and i went and started doing the due diligence on him at that period in the beginning of the season and he's a movie <laughs> that nigga be rapping that nigga be in the projects. I'm like, yo, is this nigga in the project? He wears designer. And be honest, I haven't followed him ever since then. But when I went to his page, when when we said what we said, and a, him and AB had that back and forth, I'm like, yo, this nigga. And I'd never seen video of it. Just off the pictures, I'm like, yo, this nigga look like he's a movie and a problem. Because think about it. He told AB, yo, keep my name out your mouth after AB called him Butterfingers or whatever he called him. And AB said what he said back to him. But... Uh, if you want urban America down south, yeah, he he's looked like just from his pictures alone, looked like a very interesting personality. Okay, and then also on the topic of receiver, this is the last question before we wrap. There are still around twenty unsigned free agents, but a big question mark is Odell Beckham Jr. What team could you guys see him going to next? And also, do you guys believe that he should have? you know, a documentary scene. Odell should definitely be in that group. But I think they, I think Odell looks like the type of guy, he probably turned it down. You think he's bigger than that? And he, and he is to um, a, a degree. He could be on the Kardashians. He could be on a lot of other things. Um, pause. And, and, and when I thought about it, what team, he, w- he would be great in the Raiders. I think I think Odell Beckham Jr. need to be at a city. It's more of a city than a team. You know, I I wouldn't have, I didn't like really Baltimore as a place for him to stay, but it was a place to start. Um, he needs to be in Miami, one of those type of places, Vegas, Atlanta, somewhere where it goes with what what his lifestyle is like. Um, I think Ob. OBJ, as far as um, him overall as a person and a player, he has such a great beginning with the Giants. He prospered at such a young age. And mm-hmm. then he's very flamboyant, uh, you know, dances, um, blonde hair, tattoos, paws all over, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just think that he's very eclectic. And sometimes... And, the, you know, I think he calmed down now. I think uh, maybe a few years ago he was doing too much for organizations to maybe want to take a chance on him. And then his produ- his pro- productivity on the field dropped. So it's like, you know, as good as o- o- Odell was starting off, there's no reason he should be on one-year contracts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If You know, he was at a point where – he was going to be a top five, top ten receiver in the league for seven, eight years straight. Injuries also hindered that also. But I would never think for Odell Beckham Jr. to be 31 years old and be like, what's next for him? Considering the start that he had, it's like, damn, um, you. I, I'm not going to disagree with the Raiders. You kind of call Isaiah Thomas. I don't know where he should go right now. Maybe that may he happen. Would be good on, he would be good actually on, on Kansas City. Title town. He'll be great. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it's only uh um uh, what's the nigga that dropped all the passes? Darius Tony. Yeah, that nigga only nigga who ain't probably dropping passes. So <laughs> everybody, if you could catch the ball, you're gonna yeah, be good. If you can catch the ball <laughs> on, on <laughs> Kansas City, yeah, you can be a star. I need I'm saying this, but I'm saying this not disagreeing with you, but 
if you're not catching the ball, Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is going to make you good. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to make you good. That's almost a cheat code. But I wouldn't be mad at that pickup, especially if they could get him at a good price. But I don't know. I don't know where he should go. Mace has better insight that on, insight on that than me. But I'm just more like, damn, this nigga right here was going to be that nigga. It looked like he was going to be that nigga. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of it was based upon, not saying he wasn't putting numbers up, a lot of it was he knows how to dance. His celebrations in the end zone was good, and he caught that. <laughs> yeah. He caught that pass, yeah. and that's what put him on the map. Tampa, Miami, one of those. Tampa, Miami, um, the Eagles, one of them type cities. Yeah. Tampa would actually be good because you got Mike Evans on the other side. Uh, but then again, I don't want to say that either because he already played play with Baker Mayfield and um, – and the uh, Browns? Yeah, with the Browns. So I'm not sure how that went or how that worked out, but obviously it didn't work out for the Browns. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'm, I'll sit here and wait and figure it out when I do some more homework on it. Okay. I will just add, though, I think if OBJ is sent to the Chiefs, that's just going to feel like such a setup because obviously all the attention is on the Chiefs. Title then you town. got Taylor Swift, Title and that's going to bring Kim K into the mix. It just seems like a lot. Well, he's dating Kim K? That's what they're saying. <laughs> and I felt my push for that. <laughs> like, yeah. That's I'm like, it's such a setup. Like, of course, of course. Kim K and Taylor Swift. What more else could you need? Okay, y'all. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh,